black cars. Black cars. Black cars. Is there no hope? there's hope. Uh, I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for hope. Hope I'm going to win this race today. There's always hope. Look at this. The sun is coming out at Pocono, so you know there's hope. A hundred thousand people ready to pack their way into Pocono International Raceway. For another afternoon of Winston Cup stock car racing. A beautiful day for racing. Great to have you with us on TBS Sports. Welcome to our exclusive live coverage of the Miller Genuine Draft 500. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rick Benjamin of the STP Pit Communication Center. 42 drivers have all sorts of hope this afternoon because Pocono is a place that really helps you roll the dice as a driver. It deals different hands to different drivers from different times when we come here to run. These drivers were just here a few weeks ago. Many of them have found they needed new combinations to excel here this afternoon. Lots of stories to bring you here today on TBS, and it's great to have you with us. One of the drivers whose roll of the dice came up perfectly so far, standing by with our Dick Berggren on pit road. And Jeff Bodine isn't just on the pole in the last practice yesterday afternoon. He was a half a second faster than those fearsome black cars. But how about it? How about the end of the race? Can you still be up front? Well, we're going to try to be. That's what's important. It doesn't matter how fast you qualify or how fast you run in practice, how fast you run that last lap of the race. And the car, uh, we have confidence in the car. The tires, the whole, the whole setup. So uh, we're looking for a good race. Got to say hi to Kathy, Matt, and Barry back home. I love you guys. Working pit road with me today is Randy Pemberton. Randy? Thank you, Dick Berger, and I'm on the outside of row one. This is where Ward Burton sits. This is a guy that could use some luck. In his last seven starts, his best finish is 31st after running well in some of these races. Ward, can you turn your luck around today, stay up front all day, possibly even win this thing? Man, I'd like to think so. Uh, the hardest car in my team did a good job for me qualifying Friday. We had changed the car quite a bit yesterday because we were blistering right rear tires, so it's going to be kind of iffy to see how we are, but we'll keep on working with it, and uh, hopefully we can have some luck and the cars stay together and stay out of wrecks and be there at the end of the race. Okay, good luck, Ward. And uh, somebody that's had a little bit better luck than Ward so far this year is standing by with Dick Berger. Bernie Irvin, you're starting fifth. You ought to have a big smile, but you've had some problems with the car. Yeah, the car hadn't really drove as good as we'd like, and um, we are hope we got her dialed in. Larry's done a lot of work on it, and I have all the faith in the world in him. I want to say hi to Kim and Jordan, and uh, especially to a, a real good friend of ours at Texaco that got injured, um, Ken Schaefer. We're looking for you, Ken. We want you to get back here. Two more members of our broadcast team we want you to meet today. One you're familiar with, one you're not familiar with in this role. We'll show you him in just a moment. But you might have seen this fellow's latest and greatest hit last night. Heavy damage on the right front corner of that car, and it is leaking fluid. I've seen uh, Kenny take his helmet Kenny off. Wallace Kenny wound up in the wall last night. Kenny? Well, thank you, guys. You know, one thing we're going to report on here, you know, historically, Pocono is a gas mileage racetrack. What we're going to be paying attention to are people like Dale Jarrett, Kenny Schrader, Darrell right, Waltrip, Wall. and Harry Gant. you got to watch for these guys. All right, Kenny Wallace, and standing by with us today at the STP Pit Communication Center, a guy we're more used to seeing behind the wheel, but it's good to have Chuck Bown here. Thank you, Greg. Pleasure to be here. Now, a few weeks ago, you ran in this race, and this track bit you. That's yeah. why you're here today with an injured foot, injured hand. This track has changed a lot. It really has. This is five weeks later. It's hotter. They've run three preliminary races already. It's going to be slick, and a slick track expert, Dale Earnhardt, Randy's with him. Well, Dale Earnhardt's going to start 20th today, and the question is going to be to you, Dale, what has changed from five weeks ago with your race car and this racetrack here? Well, a lot of luck and uh, consistency, hopefully. Uh, we ended up second here in the spring race, so, you know, we, we're racing real hard for those points, and we're starting 20th, which we're not a good qualifier here at Pocono for some reason, but we feel like our chances are good after practice. We feel like we can run with most of the cars. The, you know, the tire situation is going to be interesting to see what happens there at the first of the, the race, but... Uh, I feel like we can beat the uh, cars I'm racing and uh, see what happens. Okay, Dick Bergman's over with Rusty Wallace. And he won the last race here at Pocono, and he won it in his car. But, Rusty, you're not on the pole today. Could you do it? Well, I hope so. I think we've got a really good car. It's the same car I had here last time. Nothing's been changed. The weather's pretty close. It's just the Hoosier tires. they got a real sticky tire for qualifying. 
and they've out-qualified us, but this tire's good years are really racing well, so I got a feeling those things are going to tear up. We'll see what happens. Okay, now let's go to championship crew chief Barry Dotson and the voice of big-time stock car racing Ken Squire. Well, thank you very much, and it's a great pleasure to have one of the best boss wrenches in the game. He's had cars win here with Tim Richmond and Kaylee Arborough and Richard Petty over the years, Barry Dotson alongside. Barry, usually you come here and you talk about fuel. Back here in 90, we saw Jeff Bodine win on fuel. Uh, Daryl did it in 92, and uh, Harry Gant came right along with him. But that's not the issue here today. We got a real old-fashioned tire war. We got a real old-fashioned tire war. We got a couple of races going on. We're just past the midway point the race for the Winston Cup title. And talk about a tire war, it's really heated up here. The Hoosiers are blazing hot and they're blazing fast. Yes, indeed, they have the uh, front two rows all locked up, the Burton brothers, Sachs, and of course, Jeff Bodine up there on the point. As we get ready to go, 11 cars on Hoosier tires. They've all qualified well. And meanwhile, those Goodyear guys, you're saying that it's a little like the tortoise and the hare kind of story here today. It could be the tortoise and the hare. We're just going to have to wait and see how it falls. And uh, we know who the tortoise is and the uh, hare for sure are those Hoosier cars. Let's uh, get the command to get this one going. Genuine Draft, 500 from Pocono. Yeah. It's a perfect day for a race here at Pocono, Pennsylvania on this two and a half mile tri-oval from the Advanced Auto Parts aerial platform. A view of this packed capacity infield plus a little wildlife. Had a couple of deer out there running around this morning. But here are the deer we're going to be following. The fleet and fast Winston Cup cars coming out 42 strong for this million dollar race. And let's take a look at the starting lineup. Here's your Haviland starting grid. On the pole, it's Jeff Bodine's Ford, the 1990 winner of this event. Alongside is Ward Burton, his best start ever for the freshman from Virginia. In row two, it's Greg Sachs from New York. And Jeff Burton is there, the younger of the Burton brothers, going to row three for today's competition. There's Ernie Urban. Ninth time this year, he started in the top five and winner last week at New Hampshire, Ricky Rudd's alongside. For row four today, you have Jeff Gordon, winner of the Coca-Cola 600 earlier this year, and Loy Allen. In row five, it's Ken Schrader looking for his first win since 91, and Rusty Wallace, the winner here back in June. For row six, you have Joe Nemechek, the freshman from Florida, looking good. And beside him, looking for his first win of the year, comes Mark Martin. In row seven today, it's Bobby Labonte, the sophomore from Texas. And flanking him will be Brett Bodine in car number 26, one of the three Bodine brothers in today's event. Row eight is Harry Gant in his final performance here at Pocono. Beside him, Bobby Hamilton, veteran from Tennessee. In row nine, it's Dale Jarrett, won last year's Daytona 500. And Sterling Marlin is there, this year's Daytona 500 winner. For row 10, Bill Elliott, four-time winner here at Pocono. And the man everybody's talking about, the current point leader, Dale Earnhardt. For the rest of the field, in row 11, it's Wally Dollenbach in the Richard Petty car. And Billy Stanbridge with a great performance. Row 12 is Jeremy Mayfield with his new ride for Kelly Arborough and Rick Max. Row 13 is Mike Wallace and Darrell Waltrip, another four-time winner here at Pocono. Row 14 is Derek Cope and Terry Labonte. Row 15, Tim Steele driving the Bobby Allison car today. And Bob Shack, six-time winner in ARCA on this track. In row 16 is Todd Bodine and Ted Musgrave. Row 17, Morgan Shepard and Dave Marcus. Row 18 today is Hutch Strickland and John Andretti. Row 19, Kyle Petty, who won here in June of 93, and Rich Bickle, 
Row 20 is Steve Grissom and Lake Speed. Rounding out the field, provisional starters Michael Waltrip, currently eighth in points, and Jimmy Spencer with a provisional start after he crashed his car on the first day of practice and a winner just two weeks ago at Daytona. In-car cameras. First with DW, Daryl Waltrip's number 17. And Rusty Wallace giving you these pictures from 10th position. Field on the long pond straightaway. 3,000 feet up to the tunnel turn. Banked eight degrees. Tricky. That's where you can make it or break it. And a lot of them have broken it here in what we've seen earlier this year. Now let's go inside Mike Wallace's Heilig Myers car number 90. That's from the 25th position. That short shoot of 1,780 feet that lur then lurks that big turn three area, just about flat six degrees. That's the one you've got to hit dead on to get yourself perfect. This long front straightaway of 3,700 feet. Chevrolet track description for this course as the field comes out of three. Getting ready to go racing. Two and a half mile course. Settling down for the start. There you see the length of the straightaways. Field coming up. Jeff Bodine brings them down from the pole, who requalified at 163.8. Trying to jump out in front. Ward Burton. Bodine right back after him. Down into the 14 degree banking of turn number one. And into the long pond straightaway for the first time this afternoon with Ward Burton showing in first place. Jeff Bodine in second, Jeff Burton in third, Greg Sachs in fourth. So you have those Hoosier shot cars in the front four positions, Barry. Yes, you do. They're going to be awful strong here. Those cars are up to one second quicker. I don't know how long it'll last. Estimate 10, 15, 20 laps? I would say. Uh, 12 to 15 laps, you might see a problem here from what I saw in the last practice yesterday. We'll have to wait and see. Coming around, here's Ward Burton, who has never led a Winston Cup lap, getting one. The pride of South Boston, Virginia. What a race they had there last night. Ward Burton coming down, leading the field. Take a look at Earnhardt here at number three with Sterling Marlin on the outside. Sterling loose there for just a moment. In turn one and still loose. Dale Jarrett getting up underneath it. Hamilton on the outside of Earnhardt. A little bumping here, they say. Right up the middle. Earnhardt looking for some room. Tight running going into that corner and making it. Coming around to complete lap number two. As they come up, 31, Ward Burton in front, Bodine in number seven in second. There you see that second Burton brother right there holding on to third. Greg Sachs back a little. Challenge for the lead. Bodine, the 1990 winner, down to the bottom of the racetrack and going back for the lead. And the younger of the Burton brothers scoots right up through and takes second place. Car length advantage for Bodine. Further back in the field now. Take a look and we'll watch Jimmy Spencer for a moment. He comes rambling out of the back. This ought to be an event for the style of Jimmy Spencer. You know how he likes to dig and gouge up through the field. Here he is from dead last. He was very upset with himself for throwing away a car which he thought had the potential to win it all. Junior Johnson, very stoic about the matter. Had breakfast with him this morning over in the truck. Junior was saying, hey, had the same problem with Leroy and with Kale. Remember those great days with them. So 
but he still has a lot of faith in Spencer as he wheels this car around Dave Marcus. Three laps complete. Back up front another time. And here's another challenge. The Burton boys going at it. This is Jeff, current Rookie of the Year leader. And you're on board with Jeff Bodine as he slices it down, holds that X-side battery sport on the inside. Wheels it out, coming down into this very flat, wide, difficult third turn. Very not, not much place to be wrong here. If you get it at all wrong, you're all mixed up with this long straightaway. You sure will be. You can't lose your momentum coming out of the tunnel. If you do, there goes your speed in turn three. That's what's wrong with Ward. His car looks a little tight right now. Good start of today's race. 42, Kyle Petty is on the move. He's moving up. Greg Sachs making a shot on the inside, taking over in third. The white number 77, the U.S. Air Car. Greg Sachs into third place. And look at Ernie Urban pulling alongside Ward Burton in the 31. That's horsepower. Robert Yates really put him together and get some power to the ground. And with it comes Ricky Rudd into fifth in car 10. That's some more horsepower. Hey, guys, uh, uh, Ward Burton's crew chief just came over the radio and asked Ward just to take it easy right now. We've got 500 miles to go here. They want to take it easy on the Hoosiers right now and make sure they get a chance to get them off the car after the first pit stop and take a look at them. I think that's a good idea, Barry, don't you? It certainly is. You know, in the, the years past when we had the tire war going on, we took the Hoosiers off if they made it, and we took the water hose to them. You might see some of that. Now, those the name that means protection. Caution when Grissom crashed in turn number one. He's brought the car around, been in the pits, and so have some others, like uh, Jeff Gordon that you see here. Michael Waltrip has come in. He was running in 33rd at the time of that incident. And there is Daryl Waltrip in. And uh, as far as you're con concerned out here, when you see him in right now, that's that's the mark of what this race can become. He's already looking for a window as far as uh, fuel mileage goes. He wasn't that close to the front, and uh, it's a good time to do it. Barry Dotson alongside today, and he was saying to me, uh, and when we were in commercial, as you're looking at the Hoosier guys checking the tires out here, that you saw Waltrip made that move in the ninth lap, but uh, could come back to a fuel contest. Here's Randy. Well, everybody's looking at him. Uh, there's t there's guys from Joe Nemechek's uh, team over here looking at the tires that came off of Greg Sachs's car. I would have thought the Hoosier guys would have come in and changed tires to take a good look at them, but only Greg Sachs's team did change four. And boy, there's a there's a huddle of a bunch of different crews that are wearing Hoosier tires on their cars today, all checking out the tire temps here. Well, we're ready to take a look again at what happened to Grissom in turn number one. Let's get uh, Chuck Bound in here for a moment. And Chuck, uh, you've had some hard moments down here in this uh, first and second turn area of this racetrack. Probably no one can relate better what can happen to someone when the car gets loose. Chuck, what do you think of this one here? As uh, you see the 29, the well, Ken, it's, it's really hard to tell if uh, the 30 car got into the 29 or not. Uh, that corner's fast enough that if you just get up tight and don't actually touch him, you can take air off the rear spoiler. That'll make the car get real loose with you. But uh, Steve was fortunate. His car started to spin and it kind of tried to straighten back up, and he hit the wall with the right side of the car. And that's the side you want to hit it with. You don't want to mess around with that driver's side like I did. Broken foot, broken hand, hurt your head. How, how are you feeling these days? Well, I'm really feeling good, Ken. In fact, I felt good right along, but I have had a little bit of uh, trouble with my vision. I've been in a race car a couple of times, and at high speed with the G-forces and stuff, uh, getting a little bit of double vision in the corners, but I feel good. I haven't really had any dizziness or headaches or memory loss, but I just uh, got a couple broken bones there, minor incidents. I'm not worried about them, but just as soon as these eyes are 100%, uh, I hope to be back out there and, uh, you know, be racing the win. And everybody hopes to see you there. All right, 10 laps are complete. Let's go to Kenny Wallace. Steve, uh, early in the race, you've just been real consistent. Can you tell us what happened out there? Well, it's just one of those situations that, you know, it gets kind of tight getting into turn one and uh, several cars trying to go for the same place. And we just come out on the short end of it. But I tell you, these guys are working hard. They get the car back, and uh, we can get back out and run as much as we can. Okay, Steve. Well, it's early in the race, and as uh, Chuck Bound alluded to, turn one gets awful rough, guys. So uh, we'll be down here in the garage area all day long. To Hopefully there will be no more victims. 
Well, thank you, Kenny. Bad day for Steve Grissom, the Alabama gang. Take a look at the uh, top six out here right now. Jeff Burton, Jeff Bodine, Ernie Urban's pulled up to third. There you see Ricky Rudd in fourth, Ward Burton in fifth, and Rusty Wallace in sixth. That's after 10 of the 200 laps have been completed here today. Should be getting a green in about another lap and get us back on our way after the first incident of the afternoon. On board right now in the Miller Genuine Draft car, number two of Rusty Wallace. Off to a nice, easy start is car number two. Easy sixth place out there. Pretty well positioned. Yeah, he's right where he wants to be. I think the, uh, the Hoosier cars are taking it easy right now. And a good indication of that is because they didn't fit except for one car. Rusty's got an excellent car. He's riding, uh, he's riding midnight. And he ran it up here last time. He told me this morning he's had it on jack stands, and that's about it. Hasn't run since it was here? Here last time. Down for a start. 11 complete. And scooting out in front goes Jeff Burton with Jeff Bodine in second. Ernie Irvin third. Ricky Rudd fourth. Ward Burton, Rusty Wallace, Nima Check, Schrader back there in eighth. Mark Martin ninth. And Gant, Gant up to tenth. On board with Rusty Wallace now. Closing in on Ward Burton at number 31. Long Pond straightaway. Yeah, he is. He's sitting out, like I say, he's where he wants to be. Ward's awfully strong, too, down the straightaway, but Rusty's good all the way around this racetrack. Into the tunnel turn. He'll really make some time over there. I watched him practice the other day. He was the best car over the tunnel by far. What makes you the best car in that part of the racetrack? <laughs> A lot of bravery. You have to bring the car in high, drive across the bottom, so the car won't push coming off there, and uh, keep the momentum to get you down the front straightaway. Now here comes that old fairgrounds turn, that wide open, big, arching third turn that brings you down into the main straightaway, where it's Burton, Bodine, Urban, Rudd, and Ward Burton. And you saw from the other side, Good pictures from Rusty Wallace of those leaders. Now here they are in perspective back down into turn number one with 12 laps complete. Yeah, Ernie's wanting to lead. So as you have it right now, you've got a couple of Hoosier cars, and here comes Urban down to the inside. We were just saying he wanted to lead. Yeah. Saved his shot for going into that tunnel turn. And here's Ernie Urban pulling up and Ricky Rudd coming with him. That's Rudd going to third place. Jeff Bodine falls to fourth. Ward Burton back in fifth. Jeff Burton in the lead with the Stavola number eight. Jeff Burton, do you think there's hope in beating those black cars today? Well, there's hope. If it wasn't, I wouldn't be here. Uh, it's not going to be easy, and it's not supposed to be easy. You know, Jimmy and Jimmy and uh, has, has been doing it for four or five years, you know, and he's learned a lot. And, and, you know, that's what it takes. You can't just do it overnight. And that's, that's what we're working toward. We're trying to build something that we're two and three years down the road. We can consistently run up front. So, at this moment, Jeff Burton, number eight, commands this race. And he's doing it in a very authoritative manner in the Ray Bestis T-Bird. But right behind that Hoosier shod car comes Ernie Irvin. And he looks like he's headed for first place. Ernie's on the move. The thing is, I saw going in the tunnel that time, Jeff Burton got a little bit loose. So those tires are hot. Here's Urban, three car lengths back. Bodine staying right with him. Bodine, a very savvy driver when it comes to these fuel runs, as he proved in 90. Maybe he really not to turn the thing up quite that much at the beginning here. Let Burton lead for a while. Urban go after him. Okay, here comes Bodine right back on bottom, and you're right with him as he works the inside. How fast through there? Oh, you go in the corner, uh, 190 something right there. Our Chuck was talking about it. It's not hard to get your car upset when you're in traffic. Jeff Bodine maintaining third position, and again into the tunnel turn, right down to the bottom. Yeah, Burton looked better that time. And you can see the advantage. Pulled out a couple of car lengths there. Excellent young talent. Now look at this scrap. Bodine working on the inside of Ernie Urban. End of the long straightaway, 3,700 feet. You really build up the speed, and you can see the horsepower in that Robert Yates car going to work, trying to pull him in front of that other Ford. 
Jeff Bodine willing to get back in line for a moment. Let Ernie Irvin go up there and see what he can do with Jeff Burton. Yeah, Ricky and Rusty just sitting there watching. Looks like Wallace might want to cut that. Here's a look from inside the Exide Batteries car of Jeff Bodine. Working lap 16. a report that the uh, turn two area of the track might be getting a little loose. You had that problem in, in Michigan earlier this year with the temperatures. Had it uh, for sure at Dover and, and a big problem at Loudon last week. 18 cautions up there, rolling cars up into the wall, and they say that turn two area needs to be watched. Yeah, as good as these tires are, that's that's what these racetracks are faced with right now. Both good grand Hoosiers are excellent, and they just basically rip up the pavement. They get a hold and they don't let go. They get a hold and they don't let go. Throw that aggregate right out of there. Great picture showing you Jeff Woodine back in third spot working on the rear end of Ernie Irvin's car number 28. From that advanced autos aerial platform. Nice view of that tunnel turn. Urban closing it up again. See a little inconsistency in the laps on the leader, Jeff Burton here. A little bit. He he had more daylight uh, lap ago than he's got right now. He's got a little bit of problem over the tunnel, from what I can see. But in this straightaway, he pulls away about six car lengths from Urban and Bodine. Look a little further back at this jam session. Yeah, you got Greg Sachs. He came in. He's hungry to get up front. He's got fresher tires. And talk about black cars on the move. Look at Kyle Petty. Yeah, the 42 car of Kyle Petty is flying. He's up to 19th position. And Morgan Shepard is up to 18th just in front of him after starting 33rd. Back with those leaders again. On board with Rusty Wallace. Boy, he's got a handful there. <laughs> yeah, he can handle it. That's the difference. So the leader continues to be Jeff Burton. Rusty Wallace is riding with him, flanked in third spot, working on Jeff Bodine here in lap number 19 of the Miller 500. At Pocono International Raceway in lap 19, Franklin, Wisconsin's Ted Musgrave had a meeting with the wall in turn three that is shortened up. Car number 16. Take a look at the back end. Let's see what happened up here in that third turn area. Just behind Todd Bodine. Looks like Terry Labonte was lucky to get through there, and he slams it into the wall just when things were beginning to get straightened out for him. Got himself a new crew chief. Ron Robin Pemberton came back with that group, and he was ninth in points coming into this race. Really looking forward to the second half of the season. That's going to hurt. That's going to hurt. That almost looks terminal right there. I'm sure as early as it is in the race, they'll try to get him back out. And he picked up a couple of spots, and, and uh, for the first time, the Roush folks had two cars in the top ten in points. Now take a look at the traffic coming on to Pitt Road. The pace truck stays out. Everybody else is in the pits, and let's go down there with Dick Bergman. <laughs> Jeff Bodine pulls his car in. They were originally going to go with new tires, but they're going to put scuffs on instead. But the scuffs are what you ordinarily would use if you're afraid your tires are heating up too much. Jeff only has two sets of scuffs. That's all he's got. And he's about to use one of them right now. They got the right sides changed. Left side's about ready to go on. Good stop for Jeff Bodine. 21.3, and Jeff Burton takes off right behind him. At McDonald's, quick pit update and look at that madhouse on pit road at lap 21 which is just about the place you called it where they would want one they could have it certainly didn't want to call it for what happened to Ted Musgrave. Yeah it's a good time to get a fuel reading that's half a stop and even a really big break for the Hoosier cars to get a look at their tires. Let's go down to Randy Pembert. Well it was scuffs for the Hoosier wearing Ward Burton as well they had they put scuffs on that car as far as Dale Earnhardt who would come up through the field nicely uh, four stickers for the uh, Goodyear wearing Dale Earnhardt team. The, Wal the Waltrip car, number 17, was running about half 
a lap behind, running very slowly up there. Way back, I don't know what the problem was. They're still in the pits right now. Looks like some uh, repair work at the top of the roof. Well, when they they came around before, they they had fallen back just just as if he had the motor go off and had slid way back. We'll know here short. We'll try to get a report on that very shortly. Let's get down to Rick Benjamin and the STP pit center. Well, Ken, these drivers, uh, only 21 laps in today. They've got 179 circuits to go as we check our MasterCard race analysis. Big purse up here at Pocono. More than $926,000 today for these 42 drivers. Race record goes back a long way, uh, 16 seasons to Darrell Waltrip at 78, 142.5 miles an hour. Drivers today, a 65-mile-an-hour speed limit here on Pit Road. When uh, Jeff Gordon came in, only a couple of tires were put on the... Uh, 24 car. Let's go quickly to Kenny Wallace. Okay, guys, we're here with Teddy Musgrave. Uh, Ted, you guys are just getting settled in. Uh, can you tell us what happened? Yeah, pretty early in the race. You know, everybody was uh, just sorting their cars out, you know, and we we're in single file going into three, and a uh, guy up front checked up a little bit, and everybody just kind of went in a little slow, but the uh, last car in line, uh, it was Derek. He must not have noticed that we were slowing down, and flat ran in the back of us, turned us around, and, you know, put us out for the day. I, I can't understand why he just didn't look a little further ahead. But Ted, this family channel Ford's been running good all year long. You're ninth in the points right now, and hopefully you guys can get it back out, you think? Yeah, you know, that's the shame of it. You know, Pocono's always been a good racetrack for us, and uh, the car's running good. You know, we, we qualified a little bad because it was my fault slip, but uh, the car was excellent. You know, we were going to have a good day except for that happened, and uh, we'll come back. You know, we just don't want to fall out of the top ten in points. Well, thanks a lot, Ted. You know, Ted Musgrave has got a lot of top fives here, I think, if you look back in the history books. So uh, we'll just see if we can get the car back out, guys. And one of his greatest days, he's had three top five finishes in his career and one of them was here you saw Jeff Burton coming out just rolling back onto the track after making a late pit stop Dick Berger and what's happening with Darrell Waltrip well why don't we ask Clyde Booth who's the team manager Clyde what is wrong with the car well we're not really sure we think it's got a shock absorber gone in the rear the thing is bouncing all over and uh, we aren't sure but we certainly can't change the shock right now we're just gonna have to see if we can get him to hang on till we can get a little further on the race here and we'll get something down with it probably. This is not the smoothest of racetracks, I'll guarantee you. It is not one of the smoothest of racetracks. It is a toughie and it takes, suffers through those hard old winters, takes a little frost heave here and there. It's always a surprise when you come back, but it's dramatic how different the track is between just June and July. Yes, it is. You know, we were overcast and cool up here in June and all the uh, preliminary races didn't get run. It was a pretty tight situation today. We got a lot of sunlight. And a pretty slick racetrack. So you're with the Adelco car now with Darrell Waltrip in number 17, trying to get something going today. And it sounds like he's having some big problems once again. Darrell Waltrip. Kenny Wallace, what's happening over in your section? Okay, guys, we got a picture right now. This is a, you know, this Family Channel car is running ninth in the points right now. Right now we have a view of the extensive work they're going to do on this car. The rear end, the two by three square tubing is bent clear down to the ground. It's dragging the ground. The jack is underneath the car right now. They're going to try to heat it up, pull this rear end back up, and these ever so important points race right now, if they can get this car back out there, that'll help him out down the road. So. so we're back to racing, Kenny, and your brother is out in front. Ooh, Ricky Rudd getting moved over by Michael Waltrip a little. Rusty Wallace. In first, first lap, Rusty has led since he won Michigan back uh, a month ago. Look at this scramble. See Mark Martin in that other Roush car down to the inside on Michael Waltrip. Michael probably got two tires. You see he's paying the price right now. Down to the inside and under Michael Waltrip moves Mark Martin, Ricky Rudd, Earnhardt, Jarrett, Jeff Gordon. 11th spot back there where they're beginning to make their charge. Coming by this time to complete 24. Very costly pit stop for the eight car. We need to find out what happened. Back up front, Ernie Irvin closes in on the number two. While we are under caution, John Andretti, he came up and led a lap. That's his first lap that he's led in Winston Cup competition. Then he pitted, swapped it around again, putting Wallace on the point. There's Urban in second. Rhett Bodine, Jeff Bodine out here today, Todd Bodine, all the Bodine gang still in here fighting as we get through 25 laps, 62 and a half miles next time through. Look at Ken Schrader coming to the inside, making that move and getting beneath Jimmy Spencer. 
Winner at Daytona. Ooh, little <laughs> rap there. Little love pat or something. And look at Brett Bodine scooting to the inside of Morgan Shepard in 21 and then sliding back two positions. This car pushed out. Jimmy must have got two tires also. Great racing. Fault position being shown. The car number 27 Schrader. So the rest are 13, 14, 15. About eight cars in that bundle. So 25 laps are officially in the book as you watch Brett Bodine in the 26, showing as 14. And here comes Kyle Petty down to the bottom. Three wide under Sterling Marlin, under Jimmy Spencer. Rick Mass coming along up through, and he's been running better of late. Cut himself in ninth position again recently. Yeah, he's on the Hoosier tires, and uh, probably good news if they look good the first stop for everybody. If they did, I'm sure they'll all go racing. Sterling looking at Kyle there, see what he can do with it. Remember his last race here, June, it was, ooh, Sterling Marlin in the back of that number 42, Kyle Petty, pulled him up just off, just off the line for a minute, and there's Sterling back to the bottom. That's almost a replay of what happened in turn one, which was disastrous results for Chuck Bound back here in June. Sterling right on him, just gave him a nudge and swap him. He's on that car number 12 of the, the Bobby Allison team and sent it Gittering up into that first turn wall. Yeah, that could have been disastrous there. It's, it's awfully early to be racing that way, and a lot of cars back behind him, too. Grissom has come back out of the pits in car number 29. Car number 8, Burton, had to make an extra pit stop during the last car. That's put him back to 29th in position. If you were wondering what happened, this is Tavola Ray Bestas car. I think they had to put some lug nuts on the way it looked from up here or some uh, damage maybe to the left front fender. Bobby Al Petty at the present time in seven machines position. Back with the leaders. Here's Ernie Urban. Striking for his place. Ernie Urban on the bottom side. That's fine. Ooh, look at Rusty Wallace. Work that off. We off that turn. Push, a little push right there, so I don't tug it on. That wants to run right up on top of that wall. Yep. Look at Jeff Bodine, and here comes Harry Gant. Harry Gant saying goodbye to Pocono. So it's final one year at Winston Cup Racing, and he's giving it a run. That's what we're talking about. They probably told him your time is good, Harry. Go ahead and race. Harry Gant, at number 33, who had that great assistant place finish here in 1992 behind. Oh, Darrell Waltrip, it was Gantt on the road all the way to the finish. Gantt's not led a single lap in year, but he's sure looking good right now. Here at Pocono, Mr. Sander, Harry Gantt, right in the thick of it. He works in the 28th lap with Herbert in front. Bodine to second, and Gantt in third, and Russ Wallace falling to fourth and holding up. So he had an even swap on drivers this year. Jeremy Mayfield out of the 0-2 and into Kelly Arborough. He's number the eighth of the finger hut, folks. He's running in 28th position right now and giving these pictures live from the Pocono International Raceway, where we're working lap number 30, 75 miles complete with only one caution spot. And the finger hut folks saying, welcome to Jeremy. We're putting it right there in the race car. Back with the leaders. Notice who's in the second. Harry Gant is there and pressing. Harry is having a really remarkable run. This, yeah, this could be scary. There's one that's run well and can get gas noise also. Savvy race driver at number 33. Hasn't much enjoyed his last year. Started 15th day, but now Gant in the 33. Knocking on the door for the lead. That's Battle for fourth place. Martin Martin on the inside. Ernie Urban with him and Grace Axe. Ricky Rudd hanging around. As well as Ernie Hart, leader. Look, look at Rudd. Just goes down to the inside of some assistance from Ernie Hart. Two car hat. They're looking very slippery up over the tunnel turn. Well, Dale's trying to make a movie. The draft's effective here. A lot of people don't realize that, but uh, we can use it. 
Let's call Chuck Bound in here a moment as you watch Harry Ant going for first place. I'm surprised. Hey, oh, and look at this run by Earnhardt getting out of the bottom. As he tries to see come to again and comes back to full of car position. Doesn't want to use it up just yet. Gant running this hard this early. He's one of those guys who wait for this around for the last 100 miles. And what do you what do you think of this performance by Harry Gant this early? Well, I'm not surprised. I'm sure Harry has got to be a little bit hungry. The kind of year he's had, had is not, not the kind of year you want your final season to be. And I think the entire, you know, racing world would love to see Harry win one. And I tell you, he's looking like he has a chance today. It really is. How about it, Harry Gant? Do you have hope? high hope for winning today here at Pocono? Oh, yeah, definitely do. You know, we've been up here a couple times, and uh, you never know. Sometimes, you know, we've been running way back, and all of a sudden, everybody starts to go slower, and you just got to keep handling good all day long, and that's what we always do. So here's Kent in the second place. This is lap 33. We're here on the rear deck. Jeff Bodon, your leader. Bodon continuing to look good. Won this race for Junior Johnson. Back in 19 when he defeated Bill Ellicott in second that year and Rusty won up third. So Jeff Dunn, for the moment, stays in front. It's been a while since he's had a win. Sears Point in 93. Of course, he won that all-star race in Charlotte back in May. And over Gant's pits. He's very aesthetic about this. And he's going to bring it on home. Yeah, that's great to see Harry up kind of, kind of years ahead. It's just it's great. I mean, he's trying. You can see he's right on that car hard. Well, one of the great patrons of the game for the years, Bandle, I'm sure he's watching this happen. He's got to be thrilled with this. He's been a big supporter. We have been for years of Harry Gant's efforts. How about this? Here's Rick Rudd back there. He's taking over fifth at the moment as he gets around Ernie Urban. Sadly, still giving a good return of himself. The number 90 car, Jer Jeremy Mayfield, on hit road. We'll see what the story is here. As he made an unscheduled stop. This one, they're working the third lap. Kale Yarrow comes in. I thought it's a side window. A guy ran around with a roll of tape. Got, got to have that side window. You can't run. back out. Ernie Irvin, a lap earlier, has now had 15 heat, 17 races this year, and 11 in a row. Remember, he's been the point leading, but we came here today. Earnhardt took it away from him, allowed in New Hampshire just a week ago before a sold out house. How do you like that loud and crack? I love it. I didn't get that this past race, but uh, it's just a beautiful thing. A lot like it is here in Pocono. And a wonderful place to race. Can't be, not believe the turnout of race fans at both these places. If you went to Northwest, you get the same reception for Winston Cup Racing. Wherever you go, these are the races they want to see. Here's Jeff Sedine, still first, and a second. Wallace third and fourth and fourth. I did up to it. Earnhardt to six. Following this battle for the lead, as Jeff Sedine. Tries to beat Harry Gant in tow. Look at Wallace back here. Yeah, he's, he's up there watching. He's in the cat bird seat. I'll tell you, the guy in the bird seats, that Mark Martin, that other Roush. Yeah, he, he had a good final practice. He had a great final practice yesterday. He looked as strong as anything out there. Mark Martin's hungry, too. It's been a while since he's seen a checkered play. 36 laps are on the board here. Look, looking for back in the field. Schrader and Morgan Shepard, 11. Brett Wapodine, 12, and Rick Mass, 13, Sterling, and 14, Medeck, Kyle Petty, 16, Lloyd, Lloyd Allen, and 17. More short. Promotional fees and consideration have been paid by Action Packed, limited cards, unlimited action. By Auto Week, America's daily enthusiast weekly. Auto Week is first with all the news every week. Call 1 800 851 2600 for your subscription. And by Delco Electronics, it's the lead leader in automotive electronics. Welcome back to Poco. We're working toward lap 40 here this afternoon. Jeff Bodine in the lead, but Chuck Bowers can smell what's happening on the racetrack over the tunnel. What's going on there? That's, that's true, Rick. I understand the pavement's tearing up a little bit. I guess it's warm weather and the fast pace of 
I think what that really means is you want to get a good exit for turn one. So the guy behind you is not able to drag race beside you. And poor Shad Andrew, if you want to go through two on the bottom. There's an area here where they have repaved a couple of times. And that evidently is where the fastball is coming apart. We're told also in turn one to drop. And we look down in turn one, and you can see down both at the bottom of the screen where evidently the pavement is just pulling it. These tire compounds are so soft, it's just tearing the top layer of asphalt off. Yeah, that's what happens. You know, they hold so good, cars are so fast, that the asphalt just won't take it when we get warmer temperatures. It's just pretty, pretty common in the, in the 1990s of Western Qatar racing. What does it do to you when that happens? Uh, you just try to be a little less cautious. You keep your eye on where the stuff's piling up. That makes you keep the right side tired up out of that because it'll send you in the wall. The New York man, it is. A, you really got to be more careful. And you must remember, they've had a lot of racing here. Back on Thursday, they ran a 150-mile Arco race. They had a uh, sportsman race. They came back in the same combination we went to yesterday, plus a half of all the So uh, you're getting up to 900 miles of competition and uh, practice. Lock this week here at Okano. That's a lot with the temperatures we've had. They, they didn't the practice, they might have come to around 90, keep you plenty warm. But that can bother anyone. Well, and you probably had uh, six or eight different rubber compounds laid in there. If you get enough to look at that, I think you'll see it's pulled up some rubber off the race as much as asphalt. And, and what will that do? That, one, that won't matter quite as much. I think that the tear, the issue probably was over there in number two. But when you get to that rubber, let lay down for that for time you don't get it washed off. What's the result? That's just debris. It may look a little uh, production goes through there. there. Yeah, the asphalt falls walking marbles. And, and if you roll know those marbles, you're going to find that out inside the big five foot wall. Second to third interval between the leaders here. And Gant now standing at the four and one tenth seconds. There you see it. Mark Martin in fourth. Earnhardt coming to you in behind him is Ricky Rock. And breaks sack in the seventh position. Ooh, Ernie Irvin climbing up on the back car number eight. Our team there from Dale Jarrett as they continue to struggle. We have what, 44 cars? He's filling that lead lap. Back at that back. It's more like 38 right now in that lead lap. Cut it to 77 as far as the night is being shown a lap down for a finger hut car of chaos. Third, so cake are still in the lead lap. We are at 42, 105 miles have been completed. Watching Dale Jarrett, who, who is not in ninth, and the earth in, in tenth, and here comes Rick Mass sailing down the inside and moving up a spot. Got me, got uh, his hands full right, right there. It looked like the lap went before when he was behind the 18. I tell you what, these Hoosier tires are backing out right now. Look at Mass. Beside Dale Jarrett. Eight main car on the outside. Joe Gibbs racing him. Down to the inside. Rick Mass to number one. Sliding through for another spot. And that foot will put Rick Mass right up in the tank. See the grip he's getting right there? Driving away. As UST was looking pretty good out here today. Gant stays in second. Now Rick Mass to the top ten. Jarrett looking for a good group. Tony Glover, the crew chief for Sturm Marlin, has been talking to his driver out there about the conditions, and let's find out more about it. What's Sterling telling you about the radio on track, Tony? Well, uh, you know, he just said that it looked like it's starting to up a little bit in turn one, and uh, probably that before the day's over, it's going to be torn up pretty good. Well, that's the story. You got it from one of the guys out there. Birds on the scene. Tony Glover, and that moment of the glory in the Daytona 500. Is Loy Allen Hooters car are coming at you. Loy having a good ride in the fourth position, right behind him. The 15th is Sterling Marlin. Use your tires. They're in at contact face to the ground. And you see here Sterling Marlin right with him. He's coming the 31 car. Ward Burton, who had that great qualifying effort, just behind him. He really has to snap up that wheel up there, and the Burton brothers are running nose to tail at this point. Here you see the 31 of Ward Burton, 16th, and 70th Jeff Burton, his car number 12, comes on the pit road. 
Tim Steele. Slowly. There, yeah, very slowly. Had a great run out here yesterday. And just at the end, uh, Snooker is going to take the box and call to our area. Far number 12, Tim Steele. Had himself a great race. He's, he's now out of this event after running on tail of the field. He was back in 36 position when he pulled it behind the ball. It's like Gant. They get ready to give it a shot for first place. Kenny Wallace, what do you think? It seems amazing to me. Gant has always been one that has waited much time. I think this Pocono track is one he really likes. As, uh, he, he gets strong and he keeps on making those rules like he's ready to edge up by Bodine. Ken, you know, I've been, been watching this race here at the Family Channel team from on the TV monitors. You know what? One thing that is not surprising, Jeff Bodine and Harry Gant, they run good no matter what tire they run. This tire is good this right now. Harry, you know he feels comfortable because Harry, Harry's the old master, 52 or 53 years old. And as Harry Dodson spoke earlier, he's not going to stand against nothing right now. They've let those guys know, and there's no telling what this 7 and 32 are going to do right now. Because, like I say, these, these guys run good on any tire. Well, I tell you, it looked pretty impressive. There's a long way to go right now, though. So there you have it. Harry Gant and Jeff Dine holding on to those Hoosiers and looking very good at this moment. First and second, and falling away by more than four seconds from the rest of the field. Checking in on Daryl Waltrip's car for a moment. Get, we can get the, uh, a, a, you an opportunity to check the echotometry that's on board that car. Thought I saw a bit of smoke. There is Daryl Waltrip's car, and it looks like it, it is in trouble. He's all the way down in the apron. We're going to go to the car. He went all the way the last time for just a moment in car number 17. You can see the speed well down. He stopped it there, but there's something to miss in car 17. Yeah, he's getting ready to let go two laps. He's down. Uh, uh, if it's a shock absorber, can't fix that unless you come in, go behind the wall and do it. But he's just slow everywhere right now. I don't know what it should be. The leaders going by him. Two laps down goes December 17. They have really hoped to have a good day in the Western Auto Car, Delco Electronics. Those are not the kind of numbers he needs to stay up with this field. That's about half the numbers he needs to see. It's, uh, he just having a tough time right now. He's having a tough day. Having a tough day. Especially when we've only run like this. That, he's looking being people down. that makes it longer and hotter than anything in the world when running just that much off the pace. Right, Gary? That's exactly right. I've been on the Hoosier cars and I just got on here rusty here. It seems like a different situation. Back to the leaders, Bodine and Gant, first and second, 48 laps to complete in our live coverage of the Mill Junior Draft. Five hundred, pencil, pencil. Welcome Welcome back, Pocono International Rules TV on TBS. 50 laps of today's Miller Genuine Draft 500 in the books. And Jeff Bodine has held command now for a good long time, but Harry Gant is chasing him. Gant about four car lengths behind as they come out onto the main straightaway. Good, oh, great to have you with us today in the STP Pit Communication Center. I'm joined by Neil Harrison Miller Beer, the Vice President of Marketing. Neil, welcome. What does it mean to your company to have a title sponsorship, sponsorship of a major event well, like this? Well, it means a lot, actually, because uh, motor spirit is a very important part of our oil marketing program. Miller Genuine Draft has been in Mobile Court for over eight years. And so uh, to have a, a program like this, we reach our consumers. It's exactly how we want to invest them. Got, and you've got a great driver carrying your colors. What can you say? Dusty Ross has done a great job for us since we've been with him. Uh, he's five races, five races so far this year. And it'll start all the way up the top with Roger Penske, win the way down through uh, Don Miller, and of course, Buddy Parakeet, what can uh, control the pits. And Rusty, this may have one to come to him before the day is out. I'd love to present him. Thanks like for the same weather today. Continue good Thank luck. Thank you very much. Rusty Wallace, the third most right now as we come to lap 51. And you're on board with him, and you can see he's got more than four seconds to make up on those two leaders as Jeff Bodine stays in front. You saw the two leaders overwhelm Jimmy Spencer, the winner of Daytona. And that car 27 is the backup car. He crashed the car he had planned for here. And that number 27 running back in 35th position is not what Spencer wanted before the pencil in crowd, which very much is in favor of my two-time modified champion. He is not running at the stride he would like to at this point at all. That is Jimmy Spencer that had that great day down in Florida uh, in early July. I think we can show what happened back in that crash and uh, probably this right now. This was Jimmy two days ago, three days ago, here at Pocono International Raceway. 
just got in there trying for all he could and all he could do was apologize to junior johnson about that one. they just got away from him there that was his qualifying when you concentrate on your primary car so much at home and you plan on that car uh, a lot of teams uh, really don't have a backup car 100 percent and uh, uh, right here the way the race truck is it's heat it's a tough time to be using the backup back, back on friday Wiping out 20 exception, they had put plan for the race. Jimmy Spencer. So now, so now he has a lot on the after him as he tries to get some out of sand. Meanwhile, Jeff Bodine, who had a fat third last week, we've got our second of the regular stop, pit stops among those leaders. Here comes Schrader on the pit road. Ken Schrader ease on, on down. We saw Mike Van Waltrip in a few moments ago. He came in running in 26th position when the 30 pulled in. Now you see Ken Schrader, who is running ninth up here. Roy Allen having a very good day up to 12th of the reporting prime time. All, all the way around on Copper 25. Straight hitter. Yeah, pretty good looking at the race. It's about, about time for everybody else to be coming in. 20.7 on the stop. Donald's quick hit update. Car number 25. Trey back underway. Tell you what's going to get difficult here as fast as these who's your car to run and i was on death down he's running 57 10 and i got on rusty running 57 and 90 eight tenths of a second and they're painting so much on them that these guys are coming to make a regular four tire stop the precaution falls they're really looking at getting the lap down very easily again a few laps ago we got a little smoke out of that car and now they're reporting indeed there is some smoke out back of the car number 33 incident which had this grave is based back in the race after a 34-minute repair job on the back end out of the Roush number 16. Dick Berger. Well, Gary and Squire, you're right. There is a smoke out of the 33. And they've got rags piled up here. They're cleaner. They're going to put some rags on the car, try to fix that. But they've got another problem, too. They've been heated at the spoilers. Here's, here's a new spoiler that they're going to put on if they need it. One more spoiler bolt. Yeah, yeah, maybe running second. But, boy, he has got a pile of trouble going for himself right now. Rusty Wallace is hit on Pitt Road, which is one driver you want in your car when the car is not up to snuff. It's Harry Gant. Now here is Rusty Wallace ready for his pit stop. As he comes in running in position. Randy is there waiting on him. Well, it's about, it's about 10 laps ago. You know, Rusty's complaining that the car was loose off of all three corners. And Jeff, about one lap ago, he said to Buddy Parrot his crew chief, I think I may have a tire now going down. So let's get it in. So so the right hand side tire is already on, of course. This is one of the fastest pitchers in the business. These are on. Rusty Wallace got in the way. 85 stop. And uh, wait for Ernie Durbin is in also down pit road. Uh, down with the right side tires on that automobile. Going to the left. They've been in a constant battle with the team. Rusty Wallace is the team as who is the fastest pitcher. Our team has been out a few times this year. He's done away as well. Back out. 18.6. 18 on the Ernie Urban car number 28 as he comes out. At the conclusion of the race, the team who exhibits the most teamwork will win the Advance Auto Parts Pittston Quickly Award. Advance Parts Auto Parts will make a donation on behalf of the award winner and get TBS to the Wish Foundation of America. Again, we're coming right back in it again. Let's see if... Oh, whoa. If he's got a seven car, huh? Almost looked like he was willing to give him the motion to go through that time. I think I would. <laughs> Your hair's head, you know, and uh, had lead. That's all he needs was to buy here. They'll both be fitting shortly. But Harry Gant does look strong in the midst of all of his problems. And the seven is on the pit road. Bodine giving up that position appropriate by Harry Gant. Here comes the exide number seven. Schedule top stop for Jeff Bodine. First time Gant has led this year right now. Last time he led was at Atlanta. Poetry in motion right here. Like see it, don't you? I love it. I feel like a fish out of water watching these guys. I'm used to being in the middle of it. Morgan Shepard is pitted. Ward Burton is coming in. Sterling Marlin. Joe Nemechek is on the road. Car number three, Earnhardt. Randy's there. Well, Richard Childers and Andy Pistri were just in a discussion about fuel pressure. They wanted Dale to make sure he didn't run out of fuel, so they decided to pit on that lap. Already done with the right side tires and the right hand good red shell. Has 
see it, Justin, on the right-hand side. Looks like maybe he's a little tough. They're starting to lose Turner not up just a tick. He's down and away. Dick Berger. And Harry Gant is in, and they are ready to go work, and they're going to need to. Gant has won Pocono twice, the first time in July 84, the second in 90. For him to win today, he is going to have to stop the smoke coming from this car. Apparently, the spiller is all right. They have not done anything at all to the spoiler. It looks fine. Vulture thing. They're looking under the car to try to find the source of the smoke. They've done nothing. 23 seconds, Harry Gant. Rudd and Mast on pit road as you're seeing Gant come out. Yeah, there's the official looking for some fluid on the ground. 58 laps have been completed. 145 miles complete. We're through the first regular pit stops. Read the race. The leader at the present time. We'll give you a full rundown when we can come back here to Pope Bono in a moment. Kellogg's presents a NASCAR profile featuring Morgan Sheck. Got Morgan for his current ride Wood Brothers back in 1992. But before that, Morgan pretty much bounced around from car to car, owner to owner, driver seat to driver seat. But finally, after all those years of knocking around, Morgan the Wood Brothers team combined for a great three in Atlanta in March 1993. And Morgan says he was born to drive race cars, and he'd well have been. When you spend some more time with Morgan Shepard, you have to wonder if he might not rather be a game warden. For all those years, a guy who surrounds himself with enough different four-legged critters to fill a bowl of cornflakes, raccoons, dogs, and cats. And you can plainly see he just loves all of them. Morgan Shepard is a man who must take out all of his aggressions on the racetrack because on skates, where you'll find him often, he seems just as cool as a spread of stare. Morgan is a gentle soul who makes a pilgrimage every Christmas time to help those who can't help themselves have a holiday they'll remember. This 52-year-old mountain man from Ferguson, North Carolina, is a first-class individual on the track and off. Got, and he got to do that the old-fashioned way. He earned it. 62 laps are down. Take a look at what's happening to the tires out here. Whoa. That one's got a chew out of it. Let's find out more about it. Andy Pemberton. Well, this is a full gas stop. We call it a full gas stop. The Winston Cup Racing we came up award to certain. This is the right rear, and that is a blister. So they were right border line nine has taken it. If he had to come another 10 laps, he probably couldn't have made it. But they were definitely blistering. But I just talked to the Hoosier guys. They said they're happy. They're happy with their tire. But they are border line as to how many laps they can run on a set. Dick Bergeron? Well, it doesn't look that way down here at Jeff Bodine's car, Ren. These are the tires that just came off his car. No blisters. The tires look terrific. Uh, Jeff said, as long as you take care of the car, you have it set up soft enough. The Hoosiers ought to be Jeff Bodine. He He's said, no problems. So both of those cars, there's a difference of how you set a car up. There's been a difference in those two cars. I know I'm uh, looking at both of them and kind of hanging around those guys. And Jeff, he had a very close chassis today to get by. So now we're down to 63 amps, 157 miles. What should we be looking for here? Well, I think uh, normally you see a lot of cars finish here and leave the lap, too. The way these Hoosier cars are getting away today, it's going to change some thinking on strategy later on. It looks so long here. You got to think about when, what you're doing in case the caution falls after that, and it's going to be—it's a different scenario. Billy Stanbridge is the 45, 47 on the bottom. Stanbridge off the pace. We just saw Darrell Waltrip in for 29 seconds on this. This is the battle for third position. Rusty Wallace leading Mark Martin. Works in lap 64. Kenny Wallace, 64 laps complete. Bodine and Gant, those, those two your cars, first and second. Rusty Wallace and Mark Martin took them four pretty well back. What do you think? Well, guys, you know, we talk about how important Pocono is on my gas mileage. It's like a gas station for racing. Look at this line here. The importance is everybody rushing to get their dump trucks full of fuel. If there was a caution to come out really quick, these guys would need to be back in the pits because they've already run some laps. It needs these dump cans to get some gas put in the car for the caution to come out. This is unbelievable. This is all racing's all about. Mr. Schizer, look at this guy here, how big he is. Back to the guys. Indeed, those guys are for the most part of the free guys. They're the guys that show up on the we and just want to be part of the team and they all travel all over the country to those colors. They're the free guys, and I tell you what you do, you ask them all if they ever were a track star. It's hard to run the 150 gallons <laughs> on the wagon, but they do a great job, the weekend warriors. Taking a look at the Napa rundown after 61 of 200 laps complete. 
You see Brett Bodine back in that 15th spot. Jeremy Jer 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 back in 16th. Ward Burton well back. Terrell Bonney in 20th thus far. As we continue to focus on the battle between Rusty Wallace and Mark Martin. They're in third and with the interval between the first and second place cars. We need to be Bodine and Gant and this pair running three and four. He, he is on the move. He's getting ready to lap Michael Walker and Jeff Gordon. Grayson Sachs has pulled himself, as you notice, back to fifth. Ricky Wilson is in sixth. Masters the heart in heart is eighth. Ninth is Ernie Earl. And tenth is Schrader. Eleventh is Loy Allen. Twelfth is uh, uh, Jeff Burton. And thirteenth is Morgan. Fourteenth, Dale Jarrett, then Namachek, followed by Brett Bodine, sixteenth, Ward Burton, Todd Bodine, and Sterling Marlin. Mark Martin. You can see Greg Sachs back there and uh, getting by the back of him in the High Lake Myers car number 90. That's Mike Boss. He's a uh, 90 car, I think, is left down. We'll check it here and see. High Lake Myers car. Mark Martin, third, Lord Wallace, fourth. And you're on board with Rusty Wallace as he fights this number two. Victory. Good race here. Busty's car looks better. It's not as tight as it was earlier. I mean, not had worked that whole nearly as hard as he was. Yeah, you, you can watch his hands. I like Wallace is one lap down. Greg Sachs pulling up here a bit. Interval from second, second to third is 15, six tenths a second from Gant back to Martin. As you watch the Mississippi, there's Strickland coming by. See Ricky Rudd here. Aaron Hart's colors, Ernie Urban come through. Uh, the Hamilton, I haven't given a call to that number four. Good race driver, that number 40, Bobby Hamilton. He's not having the kind of day he would like. I don't think anybody is unless you're on a Hoosier Cause I tell you what, this could make it all day for a crew chief when somebody's already got a 15 second lead after a green flag stop. No, when you pit, you need four tires. And you can afford to do it, but you're going to have to do it. In 32nd position on Hamilton. Just go back to the STP pit them. Well, well, Kent, lots of activity here at Pocono and really all over the country at Major League Auto Racing. The Week in Auto Racing brought to you by All Week America Only Enthusiast Weekly. First, let's show you some of what happened here yesterday at Pocono. The Sportsman car took to the track yesterday afternoon. You see it by now, rather than one Gatorade 150. Off the guard, Russ Galindo and Douglas Bennett crashed together in 86. Their the fuel cell are high. That led to a caution, and the driver of the four car, Wally Fowler, was able to take the lead. He looked to be the winner, but he was disqualified for having a legal car that gave Marty Ward the lead and victory yesterday. A little, a little later on in the afternoon, the Arca cars ran 150 miles here. The Espanto Spanet 150. Jeff Purvis started 15th. He led went a long way. Paul said William Steele was expected to give him a good run. They were 1-2-2 two, two, late in the race. Purvis, Purvis faded pit stop, stayed on the track. The race ended under caution, and Jeff Purvis was the winner yesterday. And last night, Bush Grand National Cars at South Boston Ford Credit 300. We got a glimpse of Ken Wallace by front of the Bay wall earlier. He had a tough time. Dennis Setzer, though, in the Alliance Auto Chevrolet, came around and took the lead from Ricky Craig. Dennis Setzer in the Alliance uh, tra Training School car, picking up his first Bush Grand National victory of the season in the three Ford Credit 100. And we are also going to show you up to the, what happened with qualifying. The Indy cars running in Toronto today. Bobby Gordon, his first ever Indy car poll. Nigel Mansell, first Penske car, all qualified. Now Lunzer, Paul Capaldi, and Paul Tracy. Those three drivers start third, fourth, and fifth a little later today at Toronto. Now, we certainly want to tell you about Auto Week magazine, something you can pick up. Auto Week has a special offer just for NASCAR fans. But 1 800 851 26 up. You'll get 50 weeks of Auto Week for only $17.95, the lowest ever price ever, $80 off your newsstand price. Don't put it off. The offer expires Monday night, Monday at midnight. Call now. Get Auto Week every week. Congratulations to Jeff Bodine. Jeff Bodine is your leader at Pocono over Harry. We're working toward the 100 lap mark, 70 on the board. We'll be back on TCS. With 72 laps complete, 
here at Pocono International Raceway. 180 miles in the Miller Genuine Draft. 500, it's a dog fight for the lead between a couple of Hoosier shot cars. Jeff Bodine and Harris Gant still one and two. They're running side by side moments go. But the big question here is you see them continuing to lap the field is the big separation between these Hoosier cars and the Hoosier cars. God, they just got past Kyle Petty there, and I know that's a good, good year for uh, that's what I'm saying. You normally see 15 or 20 cars in the least in the lead lap, and we could see a rally on. That's not going to be the case today. 19 cars at the present time in the lead at lap, at lap 73. Here's the war up in front. Bodine and Gant, both anxious themselves in the victory lane area here at the start-finish line. Certainly, guys, that uh, can know has conceded this race, buddy, this wishing Hoosiers today, but... Uh, Mark Martin's crew chief Steve Keel just came over at the radio in a gym open manner, manner and said, uh, Mark, Mark, you're, Mark, you're the leader of the Goodyear race anyway. <laughs> well, that's about the second behind the leader of the Hoosier race in front. Hoosier showed Carbo down, won the uh, all-star race on there and that Winston's like Charlotte, but the last official Winston Cup victory for Hoosier, 1989, the Daytona 500 with old UW. And there you see the Kyle Petty car that just got lap number 42. They were hoping to get straightened around today. They're on the tail end, and some of those leaders sweep up Bodine and Gant. They are in stage third, Sackle is fourth, Wapo is fifth. Now there's Grissom now to 29. Remember, he had trouble if you're just joining us early in the event and join Beal back in 40th position. He only has 54 and is completely as opposed to those leaders up there working 74. Terry Labonte's car number five. It's having a fair day. Labonte worked his way up through the field, still looking to some friends around. And his new Rick Hendrick rides in 20th position, being thrown one down for those leaders. And here's Wally Dollenbach, who had a good qualifying run for the STP folks. Still trying to turn their hopes around. Car number 43. The Riddy Petty team, they have had it up all season long. Miss, missed several races now. And uh, this performance here is, is not all the way up to 21st on the field as we see him work, working lap 75. Well, with 11 good, with 11 Hooter cars, first is pretty good right now for the most dominant as a Hoot team would be. We talked about Jeremy Mayfield taking a note for the finger hut number 98. Derek Colt went to uh, the TW Taylor Parks, the 02. And continues to try to stay out here in the Winston Cup racing. He's 23rd on day, a lot down, and there's Michael Walker. Had that great second place in his junior race in 1988. Came from the very last row today in this one, and has been working his way up through. He, but he too has been caught up in this panzer attack by the Hoosiers up in front. Jeff Gordon, he's got on a lap down in the DuPont car. You really got a big separation, but you still got a pretty good race up in front between both Pine and Gant. Question is, will tires and carries in the distance to 200 laps? Well, I tell you what, if they would have had a problem, it would have been already because of the racetrack green and this that's weather at all. It's gonna, it's gonna help the situation. And if it does go green, people could be in serious trouble for staying in the lead lap. Even like some Dale Earnhardt or Ernie Irvin. Elliott running in 20th position today. Let's bring in Duck Bound. Your thoughts about how this thing is showing off between those uh, Hoosier tires and cars uh, from the Goodyear cars today, Chuck? Well, you know, uh, what is it? It's about the 17th race of the season. Yeah. And uh, well, Hoosier's still winless, but I tell you, that point of the year could come here today at Pocono. They're looking for it, no doubt about it. You know, the cream still comes to the top, and the strong cars are strong to the crew, is, uh, you know, that are still hanging in there, not too far behind. A lot can happen between now and the big checker flag, so we'll have to wait and see. I saw the Maxwell House car, number 22 of Bobby Labonte. That car is running 27th on the field. And Tim Seabrill has rejoined the race in car number 12. I understand Bobby and Judy Allison were home this weekend watching. The car was doing a little better out there, Robert Advance, but he's out here looking at a good show. And plenty of laps down. He's in the garage at some time. He's only completed 60 laps. Still, still, who took over from Chuck Bound after that horrible crash he had here in turn number one back in June. New colors on that car. Hoping to have a good day. 
looking at Bobby, where it's not working that way. Now here is Sack is on number 77. He stays third in the race. And that old U.S. Air T-Bird is for today. Yeah, a good run once again. Who's your top stars? And I just look, and Ernie Irvin's more than a half up down. That comes as a bit of a surprise to everyone here. They, they really were playing before the race all, all through the garage area. Yeah, that's going to be a great start for the hair, but the tortoise is going to be there after about 50 laps. Not the way, the way it's working out at all. Not the way it's working out at all. It's really surprising when you see a tire that fast that, that doesn't back up once the race begins. And Ted Musgrave is just repitting the car number 16. Told you his story earlier. He was in for some uh, 40 minutes. He and his lead completed about 43 laps. He's just running points. Here's the first star, Martin, Martin, in fourth position for Jack Strauss. Right behind him should be car number two, Rusty Wallace, as they lap the Allison car with Tim Steele at control today. But, boy, that's got to be hard on Rusty Wallace and company when they realize that the other guys, those other guys running first, second, and third, are still drawing away from his very effort. Rick Mast is just behind Rusty Wallace, running in sixth position. Mast is on Hoosiers. Yeah, if it goes green, they'll be the field. That'll be some different from what we saw back here in June and any other race this year. It's going to be a record, I guarantee you. Yeah. It's been a long time since you've seen that kind of thing in the Winston <laughs> Cup, so you've got to go back to when we've been started. <laughs> that, that is a long time, kid. Do you remember some of those races where guys are three or four laps down and fight their way back to Richard did it, Bobby Isley? Yeah, I was with uh, number eight and I couldn't go back to that one one time. We were four laps down with Rusty, uh, 1988, one shot and rock again. You saw the uh, Lake Speed, car number 15. Still, still out there trying to get himself to get 